it's nine o'clock in the morning on Tuesday, May 23rd. This is the pen where I've been keeping the dogs and the sheep together. <laughs> when I come out here, the sheep and the dogs are pretty close together, but then I come close and the dogs and the sheep separate. The dogs want to be close to me, but the sheep doesn't like me. So there's the feeder the sheep can't get in. <clears throat> the ants can get in though, and that's, I'm thinking about ways to solve that problem. Anyway, hello doggies, look at the puppies growing so much. <laughs> They're almost as big as the older dogs. <laughs> Looks like my neighbor's cows have decided this is a good spot to take a nap. So, let's walk over to my cows. This is uh, the sixth section that I'm in right now. So I'm gonna walk back through the fifth and then to the fourth section. This is probably the first or second cell that I'm in right now, but I moved the cows to the second cell. It's the second cell. So I moved the cows to the second cell this morning. It is 60 something degrees, like 68. Very humid. There's dew on the grass. My knees are wet um, from walking through the grass. The white clover is doing really well in different parts of my pasture. It grows quite tall, has big, beautiful blossoms. I'm seeing lots of horse nettle. Uh, milkweed, I don't know what milkweed looks like. And uh, I do see occasionally hairy vetch, but not much. The grass is starting to turn a little yellow, which suggests to me that uh, summer is coming. Hopefully that summer grass is downstairs starting to grow and not being crowded out by the other grass. So let me cross the wire here. Now we're in the four, fifth section. I just love the way the light plays off of the, the grass. It's a beautiful day today. It's a beautiful day every day. I think we're gonna get some rain on Thursday. I meant to check the forecast again. It's like a 50%. Here's some hairy vetch. So I see that every once in a while. It's a legume. So it's putting nitrogen in the soil. <laughs> Almost there. My field's a thousand feet wide in this direction. So each section's about 333 feet. So. There's some more horse nettle. At least I believe it's horse nettle. I could be wrong. I'm prob most probably the wrong. Having not grown up here and not studying botany. All you botanists out there, if somebody wants to write a book talking about all the different plants that you can find in a pasture, something about the plants like in particular I'm interested in whether it's a, a legume or whatnot like what soil conditions it prefers so you can kind of tell how your soil is doing just by looking at what plants there are so yeah here we are this side of the the area the grass is quite thick it's up to past my knees on the eastern side I'm facing east right now there's these plants I don't know what these are Um, but the eastern side is it's quite thin. So, there's Mr. Bull. Look at his neck. Have you been lifting weights, Mr. Bull? <laughs> there's 21. It's harder and harder to tell 21 from the other cows. What a beautiful specimen she is. That's a lot of flies on her. Let's tell the flies to go away. Shoe fly. <laughs> so 
So one of the farms put out a video saying they're never going to use the mRNA vaccines on their cows and sheep and stuff and how they've even stopped deworming them because the deworming kills the uh, dung beetles and the dung beetles are essential for keeping the fly population low and moving nutrients under the soil, uh, the top level of the soil there. And so they came to the conclusion that nature should be supported rather than fought. The nature already has processes in place to deal with these sorts of issues. So we need to try to interfere with chemicals. And uh, I'm heavily leaning towards not vaccinating any of my animals, like none of them. And uh, no antibiotics, no medications. Minerals are probably the limit of what I'll do. You know, that lamb is smelling her mama's poo. I believe that lamb is a you. Um, I might have gotten two ewes. If so, my, my flock just doubled. Because next year I can have four. Well, next year I'll probably get more than four lambs, maybe six. I think 1.7 is a typical return rate. So four times 1.7, what, 6.1, 6.8. So maybe seven, maybe I'll get seven lambs. Um, yeah, so I don't intend to use any chemicals uh, other than the minerals. And even then, I'm gonna try to find ways to limit the use of minerals. Um, so, uh, my job, I see it is to understand what nature is doing and try to, to complement that, not to interfere with it. And <clears throat> I think if we spent more time just, uh, observing rather than interfering and, you know, am I going to get the optimal gains that other ranchers are going to get when they use different things? And the answer is no. Uh, my mortality rate is going to be higher. The return in terms of, you know, grass to meat yields and stuff is going to be lower. Um, my pasture isn't going to be optimized. But I just feel that's a better way to handle, handle it. Um, not only does it cost less money, which is good. Um, but my, my weakness is I don't understand most of what I'm looking at and hopefully I'm humble enough to admit that, you know, and the other thing is that when you look at the value of a cow, um, versus the amount of effort it takes to understand, I can see why people would rather medicate than you know, analyze, because it's cheaper in terms of time and effort and money to just, you know, treat your cows rather than to understand the source of the sickness and, and try to modify your practices to, to uh, inhibit disease. I don't know if that makes any sense. I do think rotational grazing is very healthy. It's probably the healthiest system there is out there. And any, any improvements to the rotational system is going to be in like how I move them or how often I move them, how big a section I give them, how long the rotation is going to be. So I do think I'm going to stick with this twice daily rotations for the most part. I do want to get back to twice daily every day. Well, I'm glad it didn't explode. I, I, I'm worried there might be an explosion at the end. <laughs> so number 24 is runny manure. Let's just take a look at that patty she produced. Yeah, it's pretty runny. She's still struggling. She's still struggling. Anyway. Hey, 19. So anyway, that's kind of my philosophy right now. Um... I do intend to sell my product directly. Um, so, if you're interested in buying meat, um, 
probably in the form of a half cow or quarter cow. Um, you'll buy the cow and you'll pay for the processing and then you'll pick it up to avoid all the uh, nonsense with the regulations. But if I could figure out a way to sell you meat directly um, without having to go through the USD certification process, you know, I'm sure there's a way to do it, you know, so we'll figure it out. But my goal is to turn these into meat cows and hopefully develop the best meat I can on grass. And at some point I do plan on changing the genetics of the herd. Either by selectively breeding or by uh, <coughs> bringing in more cows of a different breed. The South Poles are interesting. There's other breeds out there. There's like the Merle Gray or something like that. They're supposedly, they do well. The Thule is another breed that I'm interested in. So, Wagyu, I, I think I want to try some Wagyu, see how Wagyu does. Um, the Brangus is interesting too. I want to try some of Brangus. Would that mean I need a Brahmin cow and an Angus, no, Brahmin bull and an Angus calf, cow to get Brangus calves? I don't know. I guess we'll check in on the ducks before I sign out here. Hello duckies, honk, honk, honk. <laughs> They're all accounted for, I counted them this morning. They're doing pretty well. Hopefully you guys are picking off the flies on the patties. There's lots of flies out here. Yeah, look at you, you're dancing for me. Honk, honk, honk. All right, guys. Have a great day. Take care and bye-bye.